So we played this game at PAX, and it's, a, it's kind of like brain jungle speed. Because as you know, jungle speed kind of made the rounds in the front row crew, and now we've kind of created monsters. Scott and I like the game, but I think everyone else in the crew likes it way more than we do. Yeah. <laughs> but it is a good game. It's, it's like a, a good warm-up game. It's not, the, it's not the game that you, you know, seek out. It's just the warm-up. Yeah, like you play game. that to get the blood pumping, and then Tigger's and Euphrates. That's right. So there was this dumb kid-looking game that, ever, for some reason, a bunch of people in our crew noticed it at PAX. I think it was Pete or Nuri. It's called Spot It. All right. And all it is is little circular cards that have shapes on them, like snowflake or dinosaur, green shit. Well, they're not just shapes. They're like actual pictures. Like Hand drawings. with an eyeball, lock, bomb, uh, all this stuff. And every co- And they're all different sizes, but the shapes and colors are the same. Yeah. And every card matches every other card in at least one way. Yeah, so, you know, each card has, like, a whole bunch of different pictures on it. So and every so you got one card might have a really small snowman, and another card might have a really big snowman. They're the same snowman, uh, but they also have a whole bunch of other symbols. So it's like, how are you going to even notice that snowman is there? Now, the thing is, the game is actually a whole bunch of different games. Range, I mean, the, uh, the baby mode, as we like to call it, it's just there's a pile in the middle. Everyone's got their card. And... Every, you, everyone looks, and if you see the match between the card in the middle and your card, you say what the match is and grab it. Yeah, because every card matches every other card, so everyone it's not like you know a luck factor. Everyone's got some kind of match. Now, what's great, you'll think, all right, we're all adults. This baby game, really, Rim and Scott, this baby game is the game you guys are going to talk about. Uh, this game made me feel real fucking stupid sometimes. Yeah, it'd be like, you know, you'd be like, eyeball, 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 eyeball. <laughs> The be- there'd be like four of us, four smart dudes, all of us 20 to 30 years old dudes and dudettes, sitting around looking at this thing. We all know there is a match for every one of us, and yet none of us can match nope. for like 30 seconds. Well, because some cards, just it's just all about coincidence, right? You'll, you'll grab a card... And then the next card will have that same symbol again. So oh, you then get, you're good. Lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Right. But then sometimes your card will have like a whole bunch of blue symbols. And this card, will the only match will be a green symbol. But that green symbol is really tiny on like both cards. It's like you're never going to notice it. In the, you know, And someone else, by the time you figure it out, someone else has got it. Yep. But the end result is that it's actually a pretty great game. and It's it, definitely a game of complete skill-based stuff, right? It replaced it, Jungle Speed for one type of activity because when we were in lines playing games, it you couldn't really whip out the Jungle Speed because there was a lot more setup going on. We needed more space. You need a table with a totem. You got to be even around the There's totem. There's the danger of hitting other people in line with that totem. Yeah. Spot it, you can pretty much play on any surface. It doesn't have as many physical requirements as uh, Jungle Speed. But it has other modes, and they're actually all pretty great. Yeah, but the thing is, the basic mode is, like, actually, while it's the baby mode, it's the most simplistic. It's also the highest, the one that's the most skill-based, Well, right? Well, I would the argue... dick mode. Dick mode is also high skill, but... Among low-skilled players, it's also a low-skilled game. Yeah, the thing, the problem with dick mode is that there is skill to it, but there is a greater factor of it's also the vote who wins game. Well, here's the deal. When to play dick mode, you unzip your pants and you whip it out. You put it <laughs> on and everyone... Okay, so the pile is in the middle and everyone has a card in front of them. If you see a match with anyone else's card, you say lightning bolt or whatever and you put it on their pile lowest pile wins yeah so it's like you have to try to match with the person who's not you that has the smallest pile to spread the damage around to make sure everyone else loses now obviously among low skill players the game is basically who doesn't get noticed the quietest people would win this yeah regardless of their spotting skill right so the baby mode is the best at testing your spotting skill where dick modes test other skills as well but dick mode the real thing what it tests is the ability to not only keep track of that card up there to keep track of all the other cards in real time, and to keep track of who's winning and who's losing. And they have modes like everyone holds a card, and then when you find a match between your card and someone else's, you give it to them, and then you keep going until there's one guy left with all the cards. Is that hot loses. potato mode? I don't even know. I don't even know. We have, but, but we yeah, have our own vulgar names for this, every the mode. The thing is, this deck of cards with all these symbols on it is actually surprisingly versatile at playing a whole bunch of different games, and it's super cheap. It, we paid 12 but on Sunday, they lowered the price to 9 It's ten oh eight on Amazon with free shipping right you can't, now. That, you can't buy a better game it comes for $10 in a metal and $8. Dude, Sense. it fits in the pocket of my kilt. Yeah. I mean, and well, po- I mean, a bottle of wine fits in there. It fits yeah. in a jean pocket <laughs> tightly. I think the highest endorsement I have for this game is that, you know, our friend bought it and we were like, whatever. And we played it and then we liked it. I bought it. 
and everyone else bought it. And as far as I can tell, the dealer sold out of this game. There was only no, one dealer selling it in the expo hall. Nobody would have looked at this game twice otherwise, but it, it spread very quickly. Mad props packs. to whoever got this, whoever uh, started the uh, the slippery slope on the spot. It's We've got a really good loadout now. We've got like the Jungle Speed, the Bananagrams, the Spot It. We've got the Whip It Out at a Restaurant Games down. Yeah, we, we need more. Of, the thing is, we, get, we have plenty. Of, we already have the long, awesome games with lots of wooden cubes down. We just can't get people to play those. People just want to keep playing the restaurant games over and over and over. We've got to get people to migrate from the Bananagrams to the Le Havre or Le Genoa and such. Mm-hmm.